You are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV. Well, welcome to an episode of Biohack Your Sex Life. We. Oui. My name's Elizabeth. I'm Billy Carson, also known as Forbidden Knowledge. And we are going to be digging into the title of the episode today is Things You Always Wanted to Know But Were Too Afraid to Ask. So we're just going to be, you know, digging into <laughs> the, the nitty gritty of things that people get all shy and weird about. Yeah. So, like, what is one of the main things that you know? as a man like that you you know are weirded out to talk to a woman about or like just you know just something that's like ooh, you're like mm, just right. give you that feeling uh well i can tell you um one of the things really i guess would be it's you know it's hard to talk about this stuff <laughs> <laughs> if a woman has uh an odor uh, oh when yeah. In order, it's tough to talk to them about that. Mm. And so you know, you it's a delicate situation because you really don't want to offend that person. Right. Even if it's somebody that you may have just met or not too long ago, you yeah. kind of you know kind of knew knowing that person. Uh -huh. For we guys, we talk about this all the time. It's like it's so hard to bring it up and tell that person like, hmm. There's a little something going on down there that's not kosher. You know. What yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean like. A woman, as a woman, like like you, you should know your body. Yeah. You know, and you should be very, very in tune with self, and very, very in tune with your 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 vessel. You mm -hmm. know, you live in this thing. Yeah. And and honestly, that that just it could be a multitude of things. Mm -hmm. You know, and but if there is a certain even smell, you're not yeah. supposed to smell really at all. Right. You know, you're right. not supposed to smell at all. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to. You know, like there are things that you should know about yourself mm -hmm. that if something is going on, like you need to, you know, yeah, dig you into it figure. Out. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because, I mean, um, you know, it hasn't happened to me a lot in my life, thankfully. Uh -huh. um, but uh, there has been three occasions, you know, in my entire life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where uh, I ran into this situation. Oh, man. And I know that one... Uh, <laughs> One woman, I actually created a, a fake email account, and uh, and I sent her an email, an, an anonymous email, to let her know, like, you know, you have a situation going on down there that's not not good, and uh, you know, you need to get it checked out and get it looked at. Uh huh. Uh, and I ran into it a couple more times as well over the so years. So did that email, did you literally state in the email, like, you you have a smell and you should get it checked out? Yeah, and I even put a okay. link to some websites that talked about, okay. um, you know, feminine odor uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> and things that they can do to make it better. I thought I was trying to help this person out, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I did that. It's just, I just, I don't, I don't see how a woman wouldn't know that about herself, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. But I guess, like, I don't know. I mean, I just, I'm in, I only see through my, my right, lens, right. so I can't, yeah. but I mean, it's not, even like if a woman changes partners, you mm -hmm. know, it can cause changes in, in the specific type of bacteria that's in, in the vagina, you know, yeah, yeah. and it can, it can change up the smell of a woman. Right. So it can be like a, just a bunch of different things, but, mm -hmm. and it's nothing to really be ashamed about. So, you know what I really hope for like the future of like you know, sex between people is yeah. for people to be as open, you know, yeah. and, and communicative as right. possible. Because right. if I <laughs> was walking around <laughs> here with, mm, yeah. I would want to know that, exactly. you know, yeah. I would want to, what if I didn't know and I was unaware? Yeah. You know what I mean? And the thing is, I'm um, now, um, because of my experience, yeah. 
I'm like more open to be like, you know, because I realized one relationship, one, one situation could have been a relationship. Mm. But because of that, I, I, I backed away. But the person was really a great person. Mm. And so now that I'm more mature and everything, I realize it's just better to be open. And if yeah. the person really likes you, they're going to appreciate the advice. Yeah. But there's a way, of course, to, to give them that information. It's not one of those, you, know, you, you don't want to be very abrupt, nasty, or, um, you know, or harsh. Right, right. Uh, through a very gentle conversation, yeah. very, you know, very delicately yeah. letting them know you're very interested in them. So I would tell, you know, if it happened to me, you know, which it should never happen to me again now because, you know, <laughs> I got some roses over here. Um, but to tell somebody <laughs> that, uh, you know, they have that situation, yeah. um, it's just about, I think a, a guy should probably spend some time some quality during some quality time yeah. and not sexual quality time some real quality time some right. conversation time mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and say look you know we there's a topic that we need to discuss because i'm really into you i really like you mm -hmm. i mm -hmm. really see myself with you long term mm -hmm. and this is something that's bothering me yeah yeah and i want to want to address it with you because i think it's something that can be fixed and right. I'm, I'm more than willing to help you with this situation, mm -hmm. and I think if it's if it's if it's presented that way, yeah, it'll probably be accepted a lot easier. No, it would be. It yeah. would be just from a woman's standpoint, mm -hmm. like that would be accepted. Yeah. You know, the woman would still be probably be embarrassed, but yeah. I mean, it's you know an issue right. that needs to be addressed. Right. Like, it's just you know, yeah, you, yeah. you had told me a story about about a woman. Yeah. <laughs> that was so bad that your friend. Oh man, I had a friend. <laughs> you know, this is barbershop talk. <laughs> yeah, and. Uh, um, you know, he um, had a situation and uh, when she turned over to us, he was, you know, doing it from the back. Uh -huh. um, the odor was so bad, he literally puked all over her back. It's so bad. <laughs> and to avoid telling her what the problem really was, he so blamed bad. it on drinking alcohol before sex. Uh-huh. And, you know, that's how he got out of it. And he just, you know, he rushed out of there and said it was because of the alcohol and everything else. Uh -huh. Again, showing that, you know, our reluctancy to to want to convey that information. But mm -hmm. it's really important, I think, to convey it because I think you can actually save somebody's life. Yeah, what if there's, right, because if you have consistent infections and you don't even know it, yeah. oh my gosh, it can tear you apart on the inside. Yeah, yeah. Tear you apart. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good point. There could be serious problems going on right. in the body somewhere else and it's just right. manifesting exactly. there. Exactly, exactly, right. right. Mm -hmm. Dang, yeah. I didn't even think about that. Like, yeah. you really probably could save somebody's life. Yeah. That's a whole podcast in itself, though, <laughs> odor. You know, it really is. Because it can yeah. be a multitude of things. It could be right. just so many different things. It could be your diet. diet. You mm -hmm. know, it could just be an off pH. All your pH is off a little right. bit. You know, right. yeah. it could be a bunch of stuff. It's Cleansliness. Really, yeah. You know? Yeah. Using the right type of products for exactly. you to clean. Exactly. You know? Exactly. Because your skin and, you know, right. you might have different reactions to different types of mm -hmm. wash. You're really not supposed to even use soap down yeah. there like that. Right. It's, mm -hmm. it's, you know? Right. I mean, but that's a whole nother. That's a whole nother. That's another podcast, guys. It is another podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is another podcast. So, so. That's one of them. Yeah. 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 That's a big one. You know, as a woman, like, I always wanted to know, like, like what the inside of a feels like. <laughs> Oh man. man, you're gonna go with the P word. You gotta go with the vagina. You got, you going right in. Oh yeah, my bad. So I just talk like that, but that's just me. It's okay. So <laughs> we're just gonna be there, laying on you know, the table. You uh, <laughs> know, it's an interesting question. They actually are all slightly different. They don't all feel the same. That's so crazy to me. Yeah. So like different as in what? Like how? Well, um, you know, it's not that I've been this huge man whore, you know, but I have tried a few, mm -hmm. and. Uh, <laughs> You know, some women have uh, in, uh, tilted vaginas, where the actual vagina is tilted inside of the uh, canal. Yeah, wow. And uh, it's actually something that can cause somebody to have difficulty even giving birth. Yeah, yeah. And more people than you think are walking around with tilted vaginas. Some people have tilted vaginas and don't even know. Yeah. And the um, person that I was with did, was diagnosed with a tilted vagina. Um, and it's very interesting because, you know, certain angles are really good, <laughs> you know, because you can really hit the spot good. And, um, you, you know, and but some angles can actually hurt, you know, not the woman, but the man. Because yeah. if you're very rigid and you're hitting that angle and, you know, that tilt is, is there um, and you're very rigid, certain positions could be a little um, a little unpleasing, a little painful, you know, from time to time. Right. Uh, it's pretty interesting, though, but it has it has its benefits and it has its disadvantages altogether, too, because. In some ways, there's, you know, um, you can really make a lot of contact with the walls inside the vagina 
Now you can, you know, you can create some orgasms, some really good orgasms for that for that woman. And in some angles, they're just kind of painful. So as long as you know that, you know, you're okay. Um, some women um, are. Um, I that would know. make sense because yeah. as above, so below. You know, right. there's yeah. tilted, tilted penises. That's true. So yeah, yeah. tilted, band, that, makes, warped, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, you know, because I mean, really, a vagina is just, you know, a, well, a penis and scrotum are just That's an inverted true. vagina. Right. Exactly. You mm-hmm. know, we all start off as females, actually, mm. and then later on, the male emerges. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But uh, and in that case, you know, the vaginal canal turns into the penis, and mm-hmm. the, and yep. the ovaries really become the scrotum. Mm-hmm. Everything drops down, and becomes scrotum. So. But yeah, so whatever's uh, you know as above, so below for real, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And there are women with um, you know uh, very tight fit, snug vaginas that are um, you know um, very moist. Do you think that that tighter, tighter, like for guys? Okay, guy talk. Yeah. Like if a woman is loose and a yeah. woman is tight, mm-hmm. does that signify this woman's a whore and this woman's not? Like, is that like a thing? In a lot of guys' mind, they may think that. Yeah. But the older gentlemen like myself, you know, we talk. It's more like some women, uh, it depends on how many kids they had. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh-huh. it depends. Yes, yeah, sometimes it does depend on how many partners they've had uh-huh. and how many toys they've used in themselves. Uh-huh. What the si- it's not really the toy. It's how, what the size of these things are. Some women are really doing some crazy things, fisting and all these other, they're into some weird stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, and then also some women just, for whatever reason, the vagina just gets loose over time. You know, that's why they have these different uh, Kegel balls. Or yeah, whatever. because it's, it's important. It's a muscle. Yeah. Right. Your pelvic floor is a muscle that you should always keep strengthened. Yeah, yeah. Always. Exactly. And I think Kegel balls and all those things are really, really good. Yeah. It's a muscle. Mm-hmm. You have to work it out just like every other muscle in your body. Right. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that's a true thing. And people, you know, women do work that out. Mm-hmm. And it's, uh, it's, it's a good thing, actually. Mm-hmm. As it keeps that firmness, keeps that fit feel. You yep, know? yep. And, you know, a lot of women, good. after they have babies, you know, they have trouble, like, they'll sneeze and, like, pee will come out because Incontinence. they're... Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. Yep, yep. Right. So, I mean, it's just, it's important to keep that, the pelvic yeah. floor very, very strong. Right, right, exactly. I mm-hmm. agree. So, there's various different kinds, you know. Some women have, you know, um, what men call, you know, fat vagina, you mm-hmm. know, very plump. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, address that. Like... Yeah. I was I always wondered like you know does it does it feel different between like a, a real skinny girl that's yeah. not like you know not much much extra skin there mm-hmm. or like a fat pussy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know we like the fat ones. Uh, or these you know the guys I talk with you know because sometimes if a woman has a bony um, pelvis then uh, or vagina is kind of really bony, not a lot of meat down there. Yeah. Um, then when you're having sex and you're, you know, you're making that connection, that contact, yeah. then that bone, her, her pelvic bone is cutting into your groin. It's like beating your groin up. <laughs> uh. And, uh, you know, if you're going for a little bit of a while, you know, a few minutes or so, if you, even if you're going for not even a minute, I mean, just the fact of doing it even 20 or 30 times. Yeah. And, you know, if you're really into it, you're not conscious of what's happening. Right. It's like beating on wood. And so you're, when you get done, you've got, uh, you've got a bruise there. You know, you bruise, you can bruise your groin. Wow. Which make your groin sore for a few days, you know. So that's is that a deal breaker for for men? Something uh, like that? Well, not all men, obviously. I mean, because some men don't really mind it in terms of you know the. I wonder if um, like men is their sensitivity in their groin is different. It you could think? be. It could be you get used to it. You know, oh, if you yeah. really like the person, you uh-huh. know. Um, but uh, of course, you know when there's that extra um, probably fatty tissue around the labia, yeah. that, you know, <laughs> gives you that look in the front, you know, that camel toe look. <laughs> Um, but then when you when you're hitting, yeah. it's more cushioned. Mm-hmm. You know, you can you you know it's it's more pleasurable. Actually, it actually feels good to mm-hmm. the guy too. You know, so that's why you always hear guys saying that. You know, using that term. <laughs> that's yeah. why. Yeah. I never like I never put that together. Right. I never put that together. Yeah. Is there a difference between races? Like, have you seen like like similarities with like you know white women, mm-hmm. black women, Asian women? Like, is there similarities with their their types of vaginas? <laughs> um, you know, to be honest with you, there's not really a similarity. It's just so random, mm. you know. And um, uh, I don't think there's any. I think anyone can have any kind of of the you know different type of vagina on them, no matter what race they are. To be quite honest with you, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just because you know, I've I've been with uh, different races, uh-huh. black, white, you know, 
Asian. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and which know. is the best thing? No, I'm yeah, just right. joking. <laughs> Hispanic. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Um, but to be honest with you, I mean, you can't say, oh, this is this kind of vagina. Oh, this mm. is that. I could tell with my eyes closed. You know, no. Well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because you know that they what they say about you know men right and then their sizes right so you right. know <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know what they say so that's that's interesting yeah. mm. man I just <laughs> it's, it's all so interesting to me yeah. just because I feel like like I just I don't know I don't have I don't have a dick right. you know so yeah. it's like what would I do <laughs> yeah. if I had one like right. I think I would be playing with it all day. <laughs> <laughs> no. I swear. It was just so interesting to me. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just me swinging around, feeling all my stuff. Because it's just so interesting because I've never had it, you know? Right, right, yeah. Just like I'm sure if you were a woman, like you'd just be checking yourself out. Like, what does yeah. this do? Like, how does this work? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, not a lot in the open, but probably, you know, you check it out, make sure, you know, see, what, see, what it, see how it operates. But yeah, mm -hmm. you know, it's interesting it being, you know, different sexes. I think men, um, we actually have an easier way to go, obviously, because uh, women have a lot more, and you, have, you have, you know, something coming inside of you, mm -hmm. going into you. Mm -hmm. You have your organs there as well that mm -hmm. can produce a life and mm -hmm. hold a life, yep. um, you know, and guys, we don't have that, you know, so mm -hmm. it's, it's very interesting, the whole, the way everything is set up and established between uh, mammals and the way we operate, you know, mm -hmm. the way we procreate and everything else. But um, there's just a lot that guys, you know, just like women talk about a lot of things too, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you asked me a couple, let me ask you a couple of questions. Okay. <laughs> what is it that women talk about behind the scenes? <laughs> Man, well, um, we talk about the experience, you know, yeah. Does, if, is it good, is it bad, is it medium? Yeah. yeah. Um, size, of course, mm, right. and um, you know, <laughs> the big thing is women, a lot of women, they fake orgasms, mm. and I was actually just listening to a podcast the other day, and mm. there was these four women talking, it was a sex podcast, uh -huh. and um, they were actually talking about, like, you know, sometimes they'll have orgasms, and then this one girl was going into a story about how she just didn't feel like it, mm. and her boyfriend wanted to do it, so she was just moaning, groaning, and faking this loud, <laughs> crazy orgasm, yeah. so he would come already. Right. And that's, like, very common. Wow. A lot of men, I don't think that they really realize, yeah. like, a lot of women fake it a lot. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. They fake it a that's lot. That's incredible. I mean, they, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so... Um, so a lot of these women, are they in relationships with some of these guys? Yeah. So like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I I was I used to be with that that woman. Yeah. I used to fake it a lot. Yeah. Um, and and sometimes because sometimes it's boring. Sometimes mm -hmm. you just want it to be over. So yeah. like the more like you know you put on a show. Right. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, show. but see, then also it's different for women. I feel yeah. like because right. men, it's like you always have to come, right? Yeah. You always come. If a man doesn't come, it's like blue balls mm -hmm. or something, right? right? But for a woman, you don't really need to come every mm -hmm. time. It's not because it still is a pleasurable experience. Yeah. You know. Okay. So you still get pleasure even though you might not have an orgasm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it still feels yeah. good. It's right. just you don't have the climax. Right. You know? And why do you think these guys are not making these women climax? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> there's there's <laughs> multiple reasons for yeah. that. They could be a two pump chump, you right. know. Okay. In and out. <laughs> uh, yeah, that that happens. <laughs> they could just be whack. Right. Um, the emotional connection could not be there because honestly, yeah. anyone can have an orgasm mm -hmm. with energy. Mm -hmm. You could, you know, go like this over a body yeah. and not even touch it. And then right. that body can have an orgasm. So right. really it's an emotional mm -hmm. and almost spiritual connection with that person mm -hmm. and with yourself though, mm -hmm. and with yourself. So if you're not, if you're not connected with your own body mm -hmm. and you're not present, yeah. like sex is like a you you have to be present and right. entangled in that moment yeah. like a lot of people i feel like they they think about other things during mm -hmm. like damn i gotta get this groceries and right they gotta do this like and they're just not present but yeah. sex can be like a very magical spiritual experience Absolutely. if you are connected and present in that moment yeah and really sharing and going back and forth you know sharing yeah. your energy with that person yeah um i think a lot of guys the reason why there it's like that is because a lot of a lot of men are and you know and, and younger men too mostly I think are mostly into themselves. Mm -hmm. They see sexual experiences just how can I get off? Mm -hmm. How can I myself get off? And versus 
how can I satisfy, you know, my partner or the woman that I'm with? Mm -hmm. And because of that, it's, there, it's very single minded and it's more focused on the self and not on, um, the, you know, the pair. Mm -hmm. And I think that if guys went in with the mindset of not trying to satisfy themselves but focusing on satisfying, getting pleasure and satisfying their woman, mm -hmm. I think that the result will be a lot better. There'll mm -hmm. be more foreplay, there'll be more, you know, some more pillow talk, there'll be more play. And I think in the end game, as long as they know how to make the right moves, I think there'll be more orgasms. Mm -hmm. you know? <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are you still in that club that you was in before? <laughs> oh man, no, no, I don't, I don't have that issue anymore. I don't, yeah. I don't need to fake orgasms yeah, yeah. anymore. Well, that's good. <laughs> Fine, that's good. <laughs> no, it's good. But I, you know what? I just think like because like you, like you said, I noticed yeah. about about you. You know, you're attentive. Yeah. Like, and it's really, really about foreplay. It's about really, really being in the moment and getting mm. that bot, the, the yeah. woman's body ready to right, even right. go in there. Yeah. Because, I mean, like some guys, they're, they're so quick to just, you know, just yeah. let's start getting at it. But right. it's harder for a woman to, to orgasm mm -hmm. when you just go right in. Yeah, yeah, you gotta build them up. You gotta really take your time. Guys, you gotta take your time. Yeah. Like if you just, you know, ah, like you see, you think you watch some kind of movie or something or whatever in Hollywood and they just, ah, <laughs> every now and then that's okay. Yeah. But you really got to take your time. You know, you really have to stop focusing on yourself and focus on your woman. Mm -hmm. Take the time to find out what makes her tick. Mm -hmm. What gets her to that point before you even make penetration. Mm -hmm. Like, that's really the key. That's really the secret. Finding out what it is that will get her so ready even before the penetration. And it can be as soon as you make the penetration, you can create an orgasm just on the penetration alone. So you really have to focus on the woman, be tentative. Talk, understand, ask questions too. Like, you know, I remember I would ask questions like, you know, mm -hmm. I, you know how does this feel? Does that, what, what does it feel like here? What does it feel like? Because that way it's like no more guesswork. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Let's yeah. perfect this. Let's make it as good as it can possibly mm -hmm. be mm -hmm. so that you, we can get this result. Because my ultimate goal is to make a woman have orgasms every time and multiple times. Mm -hmm. And, I and think, it's definitely yeah. possible. Oh, definitely, yeah, definitely sure. possible. Yeah. It's definitely possible for a woman. I never thought I could do that. <laughs> <laughs> it's like multiple. Yeah. Holy, you know, yeah. that's a whole new yeah. new thing. But really, I mean, like you can have multiple orgasms and you can have multiple orgasms in multiple places. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, it's like a whole man <laughs> <laughs> trifecta. <laughs> Trifecta, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Trifecta, yeah, 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 but no, I mean, I think it's really sad that women have to fake orgasms, to be honest, now that yeah. I, like, think about it, because, like, you should be able to really express your true self all the time, be yeah. authentic all the time. Right. If you're having sex with your partner and you know you're not going to orgasm or you just aren't in the mood, just, mm -hmm. you know, whatever, like, you don't have to, to you know... Yeah. It's just it's just the fakeness. So is it like like how guys are afraid to tell women who have vaginal odor? We're afraid to tell them. Are you guys afraid to tell the guys that they're not getting the job done? Like why aren't aren't, aren't, aren't telling these guys like, hey man, you're not doing anything. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> um, it's not that necessarily. Sometimes mm. it's it's more. Some women think that they can't come, and mm. really, that's 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 an issue. Like for a long time, I thought I just I just couldn't like I couldn't through intercourse, you right. know, like penetration. Wow. So, but that's not the case. Like you, you, anybody, anybody yeah. can can come. Yeah. Like anybody can. Right. It's possible for anybody. But that means you have certain blockages. It could right. be energetic blocks. Mm -hmm. It could be physical blocks. Yeah. You know, you you just have some stuff going on that you need to mm -hmm. resolve within yourself. I yeah. think. But um, it's just sad. I don't. I don't. <laughs> I mean, sometimes women just want to get it over with. To be yeah. honest, like that's wow. that's just that's so boring. That's that. <laughs> that's why women are just, oh, all the uh, you know the crazy acts. Yeah, yeah. Because they want to get it over with. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's really that's horrible. I know it is. It's just it's not it's not real. You yeah, know. Yeah. It's like there's no. The realness between people, and mm -hmm. if you're if you're giving your body to somebody else, yeah. you should be able to be that real, that raw with that person. Period. Yeah. Period. Yeah. You're giving the most, like, you know, everything. Yeah, it's a spiritual uh, gift. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Exactly. And everybody that you sleep with, you take on that energy and it yeah. stays in you. Exactly. And you're tied to that person. Yeah. Like you take on all the energy. Right. So if you out here just, you yeah. know, <laughs> this is not good. So I got another question then. Mm -hmm. So if a lot of women aren't having orgasms and they're faking and you know some of that probably are faking, mm -hmm. then why, why are they even having sex at all? Because it still feels good. Like yeah. it still, it still feels good for a woman. Mm. I don't know. Like, is it? Does it not feel good, like the in and out for a man? Does that not feel like... Yeah, it's to get a good sensation from it, definitely, yeah. So it builds up into a climax, you know? So it's always the build up, though. Like, that's kind of like for a man, is Well, it? I've got now, as I've, you know, perfected my skills, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where I can, um, I can get a complete satisfaction off of not a, having a full orgasm and not even full orgasm, or have an orgasm without even... And, you know, without even having like the orgasm that um, creates it to where you can't continue, you know, so. So you can um, have an orgasm without having an ejaculation. Yeah. And it can just continue and continue and continue, you mm -hmm. know, so. Because um, that's life great. force energy. Yeah. Semen is life force energy for it a man. Yeah. And then also like, like you lose testosterone, your testosterone dips majorly major every dip. time you you ejaculate major major dip yeah and so um i don't like to i don't like the orgasm every single time mm -hmm. that i have sex mm -hmm. you know which sometimes you know it's, it's you might think it may be kind of weird but um i just don't like to do it because i know that it's going to drain my energy it's mm -hmm. going to it's going to really deplete me yeah yeah know? and so i can get my full satisfaction in the process the the you know, how I'm making the other person feel, how I'm making, uh, you know, how I'm bringing my woman to these climaxes. And then I get my own in that, but I don't have to fully ejaculate and I can feel good with that. Mm -hmm. yeah. So maybe that's kind of like how women are when, you know, like, yeah. but you know what? It's, it's less of like the build up mm -hmm. and it's more of just the, it's just like a study. It feels good, yeah. you know, right. but it's less of the, you know, the energy like build up. I right. mean, you get that when you, you climax, yeah. but for a woman like you mm -hmm. know the women that i know that don't really yeah. orgasm right um and how i used to be <laughs> 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 um yeah it's, it's just i mean it's yeah. all just you know it all feels good it's just you know right. you don't really get the build up to the climax right right yeah, yeah. that's interesting mm -hmm. but i heard like it's it's i read and heard and studied actually that men it's possible to have an orgasm like a full blown like crazy crazy mm. orgasm without ejaculation mm. so yeah. you're able to do that i haven't complete i haven't had one of those full blown crazy ejaculations i can get an it's a mild ejaculation yeah and i can do that without any semen or sperm coming out yeah. and i can you know which lets me go multiple rounds <laughs> uh, you know. can i get a witness <laughs> where <are> you go <laughs> There's the stories. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, so, you know, that's 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 been something that, I, that I'm, you know, happy to be able to do and perfect. I haven't had this full blown like, oh my god, out of the way, like orgasm without having an ejaculation. Mm -hmm. But um, that's a that's a great goal. You know, it's a great thing, a great thing to work on. You mm -hmm. know, definitely a great thing to work on. Because mm -hmm. um, that's your yeah. energy. That's yeah. literally like, and then with sexual energy too. Like when you orgasm, it, the, the sexual energy it releases, right? Mm -hmm. It releases out, and then yeah. when a man ejaculates right. or orgasms and mm -hmm. ejaculates, it's yeah. releasing that sexual energy right. out, right? But if you can learn to recirculate that recirculate. that energy, you mm -hmm. can heal parts of your body. Yeah. You know, yeah. you can recirculate your sexual energy, mm -hmm. and like literally, you have a, an issue with your your shoulder. Yeah. You know, you could bring that sexual energy up to your shoulder, mm -hmm. feel an orgasm in your shoulder, and mm -hmm. literally heal your shoulder yeah. all at yeah. the same time. Yeah. That's how powerful it is. Oh, it's super powerful. I mean, it's talked about in a lot of text mm -hmm. and everything. Ancient text. This yeah. is ancient stuff. Yeah. It's not nothing new. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. You know. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You need to learn how to recirculate all the time. Right. I think a lot of men, especially with the testosterone being as low as it is these days mm -hmm. with the chemicals and everything that, you know, in the water and everything else. Yeah. And, you know, factoring into to that. Um, I just think it's really important for guys to start learning to orgasm without ejaculating. Right. Because the testosterone dip is creating, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, uh, um, I don't know. It's just creating a whole new a species of yeah. like men. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting days. though. It's interesting. Yeah. And every time a man ejaculates, you're literally um, 
you know, you're pushing out um, several gigabytes of data. Mm. That's really what it is. It comes down to gigabytes of data. This is like real science. Yeah, yeah. And um, so it's like a USB drive, <laughs> really, and it's expelling all the data. Wow. And, uh, and, and you're losing that out of your system. You're losing it out, out of your, your system. whole system. Right, wow. Right. And you have to rebuild it again, you know. So if you're having multiple rounds, let's say you are going multiple rounds with ejaculations, mm -hmm. uh, full ejaculations, then by, you know, you're, you're draining your system completely. You're depleting yourself completely. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't like to, uh, I like to go multiple rounds without having ejaculations, mm -hmm. full ejaculations. Because I don't like, to, you know, I think that I'm going to deplete myself. Yeah. And it gives yourself time to rec recover for the next day so you can go more rounds. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do too many rounds in a day, full ejaculation, the next day the, or the day after, I mean, you're going to be drained. Yeah, how do you feel? Have you ever had that experience and like, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> how did you feel the next day? <laughs> you know, once I, <laughs> I met this crazy agent and went about eight rounds <laughs> in two days. And, uh, yeah, I, I remember. Little, I was a little tired. <laughs> Listen, your energy was so different. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you, you, came to town, you came to town. Yeah. This is before I even really, like, yeah. knew, knew you. <laughs> and you were all, you know. And then, like, after that, I was taking you to the airport. And I'm yeah. like, his energy is completely different. Like, yeah. he hates me. Like, what, what happened? Oh, like, he's no. so quiet and just yeah. not saying nothing. Like, he looked like he don't like me. You were exhausted. Yeah, wasted. <laughs> exhausted. On the way to the airport, I was like, <laughs> Exhausted. I was like, man, I need some vitamins. I need some minerals. I need some damn, and some some salt electrolytes. <laughs> Did it just say you got home and you were like, you were so tired for like two days or something? I like. passed out on that. I, I slept on the couch for two days. I didn't even have enough energy to go upstairs. See, but that's, I mean, that just shows you, like, yeah. literal. If you if you ejaculate that much, it's so bad. Yeah, it's bad for your body. I mean, your yeah. body has to recoup all that testosterone too yeah. and rebuild all that testosterone. Right. So what happens is like the energy the reason why you feel so drained and so exhausted is because all the energy is being sucked into that one area mm. to reproduce to get to get all right. that back up you know to, to to replenish yourself right right it's just like you eat a lot of food you get tired after it because your body takes all the energy from your extremities and everywhere else and puts it towards digestion mm -hmm. and so it could be you know it could wear you out right yeah it could wear you. it could have you feeling really tired and exhausted and then you can't get work done. You can't do things. You know, you right. You can't focus on things. Right. Does it like make that. you have like brain fog almost? Does it like? Um, I don't really get brain. I know fog, you don't get brain. But probably fog. the average person would get brain fog. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I wonder what that feels like because for a woman, right? <laughs> I mean, skipping around yeah, like. Yeah, I get a lot of energy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. If yeah. I go multiple rounds, I have energy. I can like focus better. Yeah. It takes yeah. away headaches. All type of great stuff for me. Like I'm yeah. like, let's go again and again and and again. Yeah more <laughs> so i got one more question then so if you're having so okay let's say you a woman can have well there's a lot of orgasms a period but i mean the predominant ones are from a clitoral stimulation and then penetration mm -hmm. what's the difference difference between a clitoral uh, orgasm and a penetration oh orgasm? it's way different wow way different yeah. like so um like clit is like just that's like a that's like that's like the precursor to mm. the, you know, oh, yeah. I mean, but it's, it's still good, but it's not, it's, you know, it's kind of, it stays in that area. Mm -hmm. Um, it doesn't really move through your body. Mm. Um, you know, but if you get a vaginal orgasm, a G spot orgasm, I heard you mm. can even get cervical orgasms. Um, mm. but inside it's like, it just, I mean, you can almost feel it in, in your whole body, yeah. like your whole body kind of waves and like, mm -hmm. like pleasure, you know, it's, it's way more intense. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it's just, it's like kind of, I don't know. It's like the, the clitoral like orgasm, it doesn't last as long either. Mm, wow. And it's just, I don't know. It's, it's way, way stronger mm -hmm. inside. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. You can literally feel it like through your whole body. Yeah. Yeah. I can feel it too. <laughs> yeah. And that's the thing. Yeah. That's the thing about guys. So, so when women fake orgasms, mm -hmm. men, if you're in touch with, with <laughs> your stuff, you yeah. should be able to feel because at climax, a woman's muscles will contract, mm -hmm. like hard, you know. Yeah. yeah. Like so, so I wonder, like, how do guys not know? That's again, that's that's again being selfish, focusing on themselves, not even paying attention to anything except for getting themselves off. 
Mm, yeah. And so when a guy's in that mindset, he's not paying attention to anything else. He's not being attentive. He's not focusing and trying to feel and see what he's feeling or what's happening in there. Mm. He's just focusing on the next stroke so he can get to his climax, and that's it. That's the end of it, you know? Damn. Sayonara. Mm. You know? So unfortunately, that's the way it is. Not with every guy, obviously, but mm -hmm. uh, when, I guess, you know, when a woman's faking an orgasm, I think I really wish they would just tell their guy, like, you know, this isn't, you're not, you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. And so, but in a, in a constructive way mm -hmm. to get them to learn, learn what she really likes. She's got to teach them what she really likes, teach them what she really likes. Mm -hmm. And then, and then experiment with that and try to get to that point. Mm -hmm. Because um, from what I see, a lot of people are in relationships and their sex life is absolutely horrible. Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, I have a like a very good friend of mine that, that doesn't really have orgasms, but she still has great sex with her yeah. partner, wow. her husband, actually. Mm -hmm. They have, she tells me she has great sex, but yeah. I just don't think that she really knows how much greater it can be. Right, right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I, I guess if you don't know, you just don't know, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. until, um, you know, you start having them all the time. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Multiple times. Yeah. <laughs> Multiple <laughs> Multiple yeah. times and multiple times a day. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> anywho, <laughs> hold on, I just got it's distracted getting a little, a little it's bit. Getting a little hot in here. It is. A little, <laughs> a little sweaty. I'm going to take a oh, break. Like, no, I'm just joking. <laughs> we'll be right back. I know. <laughs> so, what do guys think? So, another question. Mm -hmm. What do guys think about like threesomes and stuff? Do yeah. guys, guys, some guys like are, oh yeah, mm -hmm. but then like some guys, oh no, like, yeah, what, some what guys do you think the like it. It's like a guy's fantasy to have a threesome. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. That's a guy's like, you know, oh man, you know, fantasy. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. it okay. Is. Like every man's fantasy. Okay. Pretty much, almost every man. I wouldn't say mm -hmm. every every man, but pretty but the majority. You know, if you, they if they say no, they probably would be lying. Yeah. Now, um, but then there's men that um, just don't think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. So like, is it a fantasy of mine? Yeah, but. If I really like somebody, I don't think it's a good idea because I don't want something to potentially damage the special relationship, somebody to come in between, and then there may be some underlying jealousy if this person does too much of this or that or whatever, you know what I mean? And then it just turns into something and then kind of slowly deteriorates the special bond that, that, that was there. Mm -hmm. So... I'm a little afraid of threesomes because of that situation. I've seen it like backfire so many times. I just really, never seen, you have seen it. Seen like, a lot of backfires. Yeah. Really, I mean, God, we talk about it, you know. And I know two guys that mm. just one's really heartbroken over it because really? he really loved the girl, but and she actually forced him into doing the the thing, and it didn't work out for him. Um, they the two girls ended up having this big brawl and all this other. It was a mess. It was really? like a, it was like a TV show. Oh, wow. Um, because the one girl was contacting him outside of the bedroom. And oh, yeah. That's all not, this other that's kind not of stuff, ever you know? allowed. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just wild. And, you know, he was like, well, I mean, I don't know. I thought it was cool because she, she had done this, set this whole thing up. So it kind of gets, it can get real, real sloppy, especially mm -hmm. if I think the other person, the third, the third wheel is kind of a little bit jealous or envious or maybe wants to be the one that's number one instead of number two. I don't know. It's all this crazy stuff that can go on with it. So is it a fantasy of guys? Oh, yeah, for sure. Mm. Um, but it's a delicate situation. It has to be really, um, you know, really uh, thought about, thought through. Mm -hmm. it's, I don't think every guy should just jump right into one without at least having full conversations, thinking about it, talking it, talking about it and figuring out for themselves. If, is it the best move for them and or is it the best move for their partner? I think it's a lot that goes behind it. If somebody just jumps into one just to have fun, you know, and nobody knows anybody, mm -hmm. and they're just going their separate ways after, hey, you know, if that's what you like. Mm -hmm. But I think if you really, really like somebody, you know, if you're really even in love with somebody, it could be something that needs to be talked about a lot more. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you think about the mindset of swingers then, like people that just trade, you know? That's super interesting. okay and out there. Yeah. Um, that one there... I that's bizarre. I mean, you know, for me, I just, I don't know. I'm just, you just don't know what kind of diseases you're going to get. Yeah. Hepatitis and all these other things are floating around out here. Um, I mean, they got more stuff out there than, you know. Oh, it's disgusting. Yeah. yeah. And so the next thing you know, 
you think everything is all good because you wore the protection, you did this, you did that, but you got something that you didn't even know you were going to get. Mm. Um, and um, and then the whole relationship is ruined all over again because now right. you can't even have sex with your own partner. <laughs> right. So it's a delicate situation. There's so much stuff out there that people, the people are out there trying to make people sick. You know, they know they have stuff and they're going out there purposely oh trying to God. spread it. Oh, my God. I think, yeah. That's, you know? And so, I mean, I know one guy who was given a torn condom. But what? I, I have a friend of mine. This is years ago. This is when AIDS was really bad. And this girl had AIDS. And she gave him a condom. But the condom she gave him had a slit in it. She must have pre-slit it. And, uh, of course, he ended up getting it. And she admitted to it later. Um, That's attempted murder. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is exactly what it is. Did she yeah. get charged with attempted murder? No, nope. no, they didn't. You know, but so many people were coming out with AIDS back then. They was like, they didn't even wow. know. It was almost like a, um, a, a pandemic or something. So, but yeah, it's you know, it's a delicate situation. Some people are into that, and hey, do your thing. I'm mm -hmm. not telling anybody not to do it, but I just don't see myself walking into a room playing Russian roulette like that. Not for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So, threesomes. Okay. I think, like, it just needs to have, like, you just need to have really full understanding and communication with the yeah. person to be able to do that. If you have full understanding with the person, with the rules laid out, there needs to be rules. <laughs> yeah, rules. There is no contact with that person. Yeah. That could never be a thing because, yeah. of course, that's going to cause cause you know especially for a woman we're emotional creatures yeah. you know so if we like for me personally mm -hmm. i could have a threesome and then but there is no contact with the other bitch yeah. afterwards <laughs> <laughs> no no honey that's never gonna happen because <laughs> no that then you create an emotional connection with yeah. that that person because yeah. you're continually talking to that you know just for me personally right, right. i just couldn't you know that that would be a rule of mine yeah. Right. But I mean, I really think that if there is certain laid out, like, mm -hmm. you know, strict rules right. and you understand and you both understand all of the rules yeah. in it, then, you know, you, eh. you got to make sure your guy and that girl don't have a, you know, that they understand the rules properly and they're not going to entertain each other. You know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But right. then that, that, you know, that's a whole nother issue. That's trust yeah. within your relationship. Right. You know, right. exactly. if you have trust in your relationship, why are you in a relationship? Yeah, it's yeah. Just, true. You know, yeah, I mean, that's like. Once the trust is broken, it's mm. like, yeah. oh man, it's so hard to get that back. You oh, know? it's impossible. Yeah, it's yeah. It's really impossible. Once uh -huh. that trust is broken, it's like, mm. every time something comes up, yeah. every time a phone call or a text know. message is being looked at, every time you go on a trip or have to leave the house, yeah, it's gonna come up in the brain, in I your know. mind, it's gonna be there all it's the time, pop lingering. Pop up, right? That's torture. It is. That's yeah. torture. Mental torture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Man, and then how, how crazy things can turn just mm -hmm. like that. One split second mm -hmm. of just, you know, a person making a certain specific decision yeah. can literally just Boom. change everything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I wonder why bodies, like, have you ever been that horny for somebody? <laughs> like, where you were like, hmm, I think I might cheat on my girl yeah. today because this, this one right here, though. I mean, does that yeah. thought, like, how does a man's body react to make him want to, like, Mm -hmm. do that with somebody you know or like well, step out on, on i think that you know in either one of the sexes i mean a person can be will do it out of something they feel neglected about mm -hmm. and guys some guys just because they want to conquer as many women as they could possibly conquer even mm -hmm. though they have their main woman that they they claim they love and everything yeah. else mm -hmm. um but more really what it is they love themselves yeah more than they love their woman and uh, their partner and so a lot of the times it's um it's something that you're not getting at home mm -hmm. you know with your other one or if you don't live in the same house something you're not getting with your relationship that you feel like you're missing subconsciously you may not even realize it and then you're seeking that in other people mm. you know so it's not like a like i just feel like men it's harder for a man to control himself than a mm. woman because the urges are much stronger in a man because of hormones you know well men have testosterone even though it's a little, lot lower these days than, <laughs> than normal yeah but the testosterone you see what happens with mammals in the wild mm -hmm. they battle each other they fight each other they steal each other's women yeah you know a, a rival lion uh, will come and attack a king of his own pride and mm -hmm. try to take his pride away from him you know mm -hmm. take and then kill all of his kids yeah 
And that's called infanticide. And so, um, I mean, we're all mammals. Yeah. And so male mammals, which is what we are, uh, we have those same urges, those same, just like a woman, when they, you get on your period, you have a hormonal shift that can make you irritated, agitated, and things like that. Yeah. Or a man, at certain times of the month, our hormones are higher, our testosterone is higher than normal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, it can drive, you know, it can make you, you know, want to go chop down a tree. <laughs> You're like, mm. man, this thing, I got to do something with this thing. Really? I didn't, so there's like cycles in a man too. Yeah, oh. testosterone fluctuates up and down yeah. as well. Does Absolutely. that depend on the time or does that depend on like the it lifestyle? It depends on the diet, depends on exercise, it yeah. depends on how healthy the person is. Right, right, right. Uh, various conditions can increase and decrease testosterone Yeah. in a, in a, in a 30 day cycle. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Interesting. There's times even of the day where men's testosterone peaks more and then dips again. Right. You know? And right. so um, there's times when guys really, really need, you know, feel like they need it. You know, they, yeah. it's hard to, you have to have the mental control over yourself uh -huh. over your decision making right and you have to get out of the sacral chakra chakra and get into the crown chakra uh -huh. so a lot of men are running around thinking in the sacral sacral chakra area instead of the crown chakra and uh you know getting into a lot of situations that they can't get out of that's why a lot of guys are walking around here with you know eight nine ten fifteen kids they can't even take care of them right right and i just wonder like i mean i know that that some women you know, they're, they're, you know, they like sex and they want sex all the mm -hmm. time. But for like, it's just, I don't know, men, it's like more, I, I feel like they're they're They need it more or something. <laughs> like it's like more of an urge for them to. It's the, everything, men and women have the urges the same equally. Uh-huh. Because I know women want it just as bad as men want it. But I think that um, a lot of men just, um, they lack the decision making capability to. to really? Um, you think that's what it is? I think, yeah, because come, everything comes down to a decision. Yeah, you know? no, no, you're right. But yeah. I think the urge is like in, in, inside the body of a yeah. man, the urge right. is stronger for a man than it is for a woman. It's possible with testosterone, you know? Mm -hmm. I know a lot of women that really want, like, and love to have oh, sex yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah, me too. I know a ton. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, know. I know a ton. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, um, but, you know, with women, sometimes they can make better decisions. Mm hmm. And also, women are pretty good at cheating. So, men are sloppy at cheating, and women are really good. So, there's a lot of women cheating all the time, mm -hmm. but they become like ninjas at it, and mm -hmm. they're so good at it that the guys have no clue. Like they're completely clueless, mm -hmm. and guys get caught more because they're sloppy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, women, I think women cheat because they they might fi find they're missing something but i don't think i think it's less than that i think it's more emotional mm. like it's an emotional thing for yeah. a woman mm. like for for me to even have an urge to do that mm. inside a relationship it's like you got to be doing something real bad you yeah. know like yeah. something like like you got to be cheating or you know like something just right. real bad to, for a woman's mind mm -hmm. To really have an urge to like step out of a relationship it was just... oh, some of these younger girls are uh, women are really out there now oh yeah, they're just doing it like it's a, like it's something cool to do, you know. Oh. Yeah, I got I my know. number one, my number two, my number three. Women. Women, yeah, younger women. You know, oh wow. Twenties, you know. Really? And yeah, it's a thing now. It's a thing. Yeah. Unfortunately. I haven't really heard of. <laughs> I haven't really heard yeah, of that. A, well, I have daughters, you know, so. Wow. It's a thing, and Dang. Um, you know, it's uh, it's unfortunate because. They're putting themselves in danger also. Right, exactly. Yeah. First of all, you're you're every time, mm -hmm. every time is Russian roulette. Yeah. Every single time. You better yeah. know that you you better know that person. Yeah. Cause that that's I mean, you playing with your life. Eventually another thing too is the the not only the risk of the illness and diseases, but the bad energy transfer. Yep. And then also, um, you know, a guy getting attached to you and then finding out that you're doing this. Oh, right. And, you know, then all of a sudden it's a crime of passion. Mm-hmm. And mm -hmm. those don't turn out too good. No, and those can be the worst. The worst. Usually it's over over a woman or oh, a man. Oh, absolutely. It's Nations <laughs> have gone to war. Yeah. Over a one woman. Yeah. There's wars in ancient times over one woman. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Continents right. have clashed right. over a woman. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, you got to be careful. Mm -hmm. It's like, when are we going to be real? Let's be real with each other. Right. Because what are we gaining off of all of these lies and this fakeness and these masks and mm -hmm. these fake orgasms? What yeah. are we gaining, guys? Right, like, right. don't you just want to have multiple orgasms every day? <laughs> like, 
Isn't that something that you want? <laughs> like, just be real, right? Yeah, I think it's better to be real, you know, and um, and have conversations. Mm-hmm. So hopefully, a conversation like what we're having here tonight, and you know, on this podcast, is giving you um, some insight to just be more open, just be more free. These are tough topics to talk about. Mm-hmm. We all know that, but it's better to talk about them and try to figure out way, try to figure out solutions. Then the alternative things happening. Right. You know? Exactly. Unhappy relationships, cheating, mm-hmm. um, problems, drama, you know, um, all, all kind of things can happen. And when maybe a few simple conversations. Right. Addressing the hard topics. Yeah. Like adults. Right. Being an adult. Know? Exactly. Yeah, just being an adult. Just have good conversations like we're having here tonight. Mm-hmm. Might be something that can help you save your relationship, improve your relationship. Mm-hmm help you become better when you get into a new relationship, mm-hmm. you know, and, uh, and just make things better through yeah. communication. Communication. Mm-hmm. It all starts with communication. Yeah. It all starts with communication. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. That's like the main, main, main yeah. thing within a relationship with somebody. Mm-hmm. If your communication is good, you're always going to be good. Absolutely. But at the openness, you know, yeah. and that's like another thing with sexuality. You just have to be, you have to be open with that mm-hmm. person. If you're closed off and you, you're afraid or you're afraid of your own fantasies or something, or you're mm-hmm. afraid to tell that person what your real desires are, you yeah. know, that's, um, that'll crush your sex life. It will. You know? It'll yeah. crush your sex life. Right, right. And a lot of your fantasies, a lot of your fantasies are probably pretty average and normal. The weirdest thing in, in the back of your mind, in the corner of your mind that you might think is just so <laughs> so strange yeah. and odd probably is pretty normal at the end of the day. Yeah, pretty Studies much. Studies show actually. Studies mm-hmm. show that, that pretty, that's true. Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. So just have open conversations. Just be free to talk. Um, the, the more stuff you keep covered up and the more stuff you keep zipped, the worst off everything's going to be. And you could put you out of a relationship that could have been phenomenal. Probably right. could have been one of the best ones in your life if you would have just known how to improve it in these areas. Yeah, because honestly, you can improve your sex life. Like, yeah. that is very, very possible. Oh, yeah. With good, open communication, mm-hmm. you know, if you have blocks certain places, you can get energy work done, you can get body work done. Yeah. There are things that you can do to enhance and improve mm-hmm. and have the best sex life ever. Absolutely. Ever. You just yeah. really, you really have to be open and honest. Yeah. And you can do it. And guys... Take your supplements, mm-hmm. you know, take your supplements. Um, yes. Focus on being healthy. Take supplements that help you keep your testosterone levels up naturally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because there's so much in the environment these days. Microplastics, mm-hmm. everything that's in our water. Yeah. I mean, that lower testosterone will actually increase estrogen. Mm-hmm. So increase men, estrogen, yeah. yeah, men have to have to really, really watch themselves these mm-hmm. days. Yeah. Just toxicity will affect you. It's so there's so much out there. Mm-hmm. And if you're not if you're not getting enough exercise and taking the right supplements and eating the right kinds of foods, mm-hmm. then you can put yourself in a situation where, you know, you're suffering from erectile dysfunction. Yeah. Watching um, porn. Yeah. Guys, oh, oh my god, no it's that's a huge thing these days. No good. It's not. It yeah. is the worst because you're 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 literally every time yeah. you're getting a dopamine hit, dopamine, dopamine. Mm-hmm. So now your dopamine receptors are worn out. Mm-hmm. And now you need that much more to stimulate that right. same feeling. Mm-hmm. Guys can't even I heard and read that young boys these days they can't even have erections anymore. Yeah. Because yeah. it's so crazy. Like the porn like and and can you imagine starting out that young wow. and you 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 were being exposed to the porn that's out these days yeah they're too de- they're desensitized oh my now. god completely so you become totally desensitized and in a lot of, in a lot of cases i mean the real in reality what you see in those pornos in in terms of in terms of performance mm-hmm. is not a reality in oh, yeah. a lot of cases because those guys get injections directly into the penis mm-hmm. to maintain those erections and do those those things and so um, it's not a, a lot of it's not a realistic mindset. Now a lot of some of it you can do naturally. You just have to know how to control your body. Uh-huh. But if you're watching it all day, every day, and you're overdosing on that, yeah, you're you're going to desensitize yourself, and you're going to mm-hmm. make your love life, your real 3D love life, yeah. miserable. It's going to be horrible. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you gotta. Slow down on, on the porn. Slow down yeah. on the porn. Slow down on the ejaculations. Learn how to have an orgasm without yeah. having an ejaculation. Right. Like all these little things that really can improve all of yeah. it. Everything. Absolutely. Yeah. Everything. Is there anything else? That, any any other else you want to ask me? Because I'm I'm open. Let's go. We got <laughs> we got some time for one more two more questions. Let's 
Anything. Uh, let me see. Boy, I tell you, <laughs> man. Mm. Um, do women have orgasms? I know the answer, but a lot of, a lot of people would like to know this. Mm -hmm. Can women have anal orgasms? Yeah. yeah. Yes. I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They can. They can have anal orgasms. Yeah. Yep. You can. Yeah. I mean, there. We'll, we'll get into this in our in our next biohacker yeah. sex life. Yeah. But there are eleven. I've heard there are eleven orgasms that yeah. you can have. Any yeah. any body, mm -hmm. man or woman, can yeah. have. So yeah. Eleven different types. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. And one of those being an anal orgasm. Yeah. I've actually heard that anal orgasms. Um, it's <laughs> <heard. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> hot. It's hot in here. Um, yeah, no, they're like those. Those are very like they're stronger than like vaginal. Yeah. You know, it's like your whole body, and it's like throws yeah. you into a whole different. I mean, it could be like you can meet God. You know, right, like right. Ah, like <laughs> yeah. for real. I wonder in a man, is it like the same? I wonder hmm. stimulation of like that part. I just think men men need to be a little bit more open mm. about ass play. Yeah. They just do because you can get crazy amounts of, of pleasure from yeah. the ass. It's well, I do know that if you go to a sperm bank, mm -hmm. and so what they do, if a guy can't get the ejaculation for the sperm sample, they go into a room and a doctor inserts something into their anus to touch the prostate, oh. and that creates an instantaneous ejaculation. Wow. And so a prostate, something that touches the prostate can create an actual ejaculation, yeah. which is amazing. I didn't even know that could happen. I was reading that in this magazine. Yeah, yeah. Well, the prostate is like the, the G spot, you right, know, in the right. vagina for exactly. a man. Exactly. For a man, it's the same thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it was this bio, biology magazine I was reading. It was yeah. This article, this actually was a real science article. Uh huh. And it was a scientific study uh -huh. on this. And I was like, huh? Uh huh. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so, that's why. so I said, wow, this is probably in a woman, you have a G-spot. Mm -hmm. So I started thinking when the male is developing, did the G-spot turn into a prostate? Oh, maybe, maybe. You know, is, that part, is that the part that, you, that would normally be the woman's spot? Right. Point of pressure? I think so because I really think it's comparable. Like, I really think that anal orgasms for a man, not anal orgasms, but prostate orgasms for a man are the mm. same as G spot orgasms for a woman. Right. Comparable. Mm. It's some kind of the pressure. So, when you have a G spot orgasm, so if that, pr that, pr that button is being pressed, <laughs> <laughs> what happens from there? How does it start to build up? Um, it's really like a. It's like just a movement. Like it's like a. It starts. It's like, I don't know. It's like a buildup of energy almost, mm -hmm. and it starts like you know there, mm -hmm. but then it just increases, and it kind of like it's like a wave almost, mm -hmm. and it's like, yeah, just like waves, right. and then when you go and you're there, it's like your whole. You can feel it like to the tips of your fingertips and wow. your toes yeah, and like yeah. top of your head. Like you can right. feel it all over. It's like waves of like, mm -hmm. like just ecstasy through your whole body yeah mm -hmm. so guys you heard that you got to find that g-spot <laughs> <laughs> ain't nothing but a g thing baby <laughs> <laughs> <That's stupid>. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is uh, it the same for a man like how does a man feel at orgasm like how does that feel for like it's a build up you know as well mm -hmm. i guess because the tip of the penis i think is more like the clitoris yeah uh, i don't think i uh, the average standard orgasm is as powerful as a female orgasm or, or, or one that a female is capable of having mm -hmm. from the penis, you know, um, moving in and out. But I mean, it feel, obviously it feels phenomenal because we can't get enough of it. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, it's uh, a lot of it is mental stimulation from looking at the woman, mm. feeling the woman's body, mm. um, watching the woman's body move with every thrust, you know. Mm -hmm. That builds up a lot of a lot of uh, psychological stimulation, mm -hmm. and so the the ejaculation for a man is mostly mental. Mm. It's mostly really? mental. Yeah, it's mostly mental. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right. Right. Okay. Because a man can like a two pump chump, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like possible just to go yeah. in, go out, <laughs> go in, and <laughs> yeah. like it's there. Some it's guys possible. will have an orgasm before they even get a chance to put it in. They don't wow. have to even touch anything. Mm. You know the. You know, those are guys, you know, they need a lot of work, a lot of practice, obviously. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, it's, um, 
it, 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 it's all mental. And that's why you can control, if you, be, if you be gain mastery over your psyche, you can control your orgasm. You can hold yourself. You can hold it off. You can go the distance. But, but explain that in detail. What is mastery for you? Do you think about other things like, okay, about to have an orgasm. Shoot, let me think about this ball over here. Like, oh, no. Do you think, like, how I do you... I still want to be present in the moment and enjoy it. Yeah. But there's a mental connection that I found between my mind and my, my penis. And so I realized that my mind is sending this signal to have this, mac, this climax. And so when I get back control of myself, I, I, and I don't know, I can't fully explain, but I get my mind to reduce that sensation to just a pleasurable sensation, but not a full climax. Mm. And it's all mental. It's all how I focus the energy. It's a, con it's a control of the energy transfer between the brain and this, uh, you know, the, the crown chakra and the sacral chakra. The crown always should dominate at all times. Yeah, yeah. And when you master that crown and you can get this signal, you can control that signal that's happening, you can delay yourself. Give this, you know, give your partner a time, a chance to, you know, to get her pleasure mm. and then even synchronize it. Mm -hmm. with with uh with her orgasm mm -hmm. that's what i call synchronized swimming <laughs> <laughs> those are the best those, those are the best yeah. <laughs> synchronized swimming <laughs> that's oh, what yeah. it is too oh, yeah. hmm that's interesting so awesome i mean <laughs> now we we need to <laughs> we gotta go guys <laughs> Hey, it's been nice. It's been great. <laughs> <laughs> All this talk, I'm hot. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, pull up some popcorn for the next episode because <laughs> we're going in deep. <laughs> yeah. We're <laughs> going in deep. Yeah. <laughs> in the future on some new topics, uh, but we're going to bring some scientists and doctors in. We're going to really analyze and break down some of this, mm -hmm. this discussion we had today. Yep. We're going to take subjects of what we talked about today and yeah. we're going to break it down scientifically mm -hmm. and give you some steps and ways to improve yourself on, you yeah. know, any of these specific things. Because mm -hmm. honestly, you can learn to biohack your sex life. That's you right. can learn to biohack your best life mm -hmm. and your sex life. That's right. And you can have the best of both worlds, life right. and sex. Have your cake and eat it too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. All right. See you guys like that piece. Okay. Bye. <laughs> you are watching Forbidden Knowledge TV.